I want to acknowledge before we begin, hello, Mr. Smith. <laughs> I want to acknowledge before we begin our forward-looking statement. 14 years ago, Dr. Silvio Tescu and colleagues formed a company called Mesoblast on the basis of a single mission to develop unique proprietary cellular medicines to deal with intractable, life-threatening diseases and unmet medical conditions. And 14 years later, there's a, an extraordinary company on the cusp of major commercialization in this important industry we all are passionate about. Today, Mesoblast is formed around three pillars, an extraordinary technology platform, an industrial scale manufacturing capability and skill set, and multiple revenue generating products and a robust pipeline of clinical stage assets, late stage phase three and earlier stage phase two. A bit about our technology. The essence of our technology and the key takeaway here is that we have a unique and proprietary set of STRO1 and STRO3 bright cells that we've developed over the past 14 years that give us a unique proprietary platform from which to develop a host of cellular medicines across a diverse variety of disease states and we'll bring you up to date on where we are with those, each of those programs. The unique takeaway for me on this slide is the MPC platform responds exceptionally well to a hostile endogenous environment where there's significant inflammation and disease, if you will, injury. So the, the, the more hostile that endogenous environment is, the more responsive these cells seem to perform. Gives us great hope when we think about diseases that are complex that have multiple signals. To, to the credit of some extraordinary people in engineering and manufacturing and CMC that's vital to all of us on a go forward basis, Lonza, our manufacturing partner in Singapore, has done an extraordinary job to help us prepare for what will be a very significant commercial business in the years and decades ahead. Underpinned by all of this important clinical work in the last 14 years is a very significant portfolio of intellectual property that spans markets, that, that spans sources. Importantly, when we think about STRO1 cells and the perivascular nature that they reside in, we find STRO1 bright cells in a variety of tissue sources. And of course, across our tier one and tier two program, we have a variety of indications of use where we also enjoy protections. So in 14 years, we've built a business around some very important foundations that now today give us an opportunity to actually put to practice that mission 14 years ago that they set out to complete on. The first allogeneic cell therapy approved in Japan for graft-versus-host disease launched by a world-class partner, JCR Pharmaceuticals. And what I can say publicly is we couldn't be more pleased with the commercial success of that product in less than two and a half years from launch. The first allogeneic regenerative medicine approved in Europe uh, as a result of a license agreement from our port portfolio of intellectual property to a company uh, called Tygenics that was later acquired by Takeda and of course our own phase three and phase two assets that we um, are excited to share information on the status of. In the time remaining, our lead asset, a product to treat steroid refractory GVHD, the basis of our confidence clinically is born out in a phase two and phase three program that 
we've announced has completed our primary and secondary endpoints. And we have a predicate product that is commercially available and performing exceptionally well in children and adults in Japan. Mindful of our time, I'll, I'll skip over a few of these slides, but key takeaway is we've got a very clear product development strategy and roadmap for this important flagship product that we believe will be the first FDA-approved product of its kind to treat steroid refractory GVHD in the U.S. is to label extend into adults and then ultimately as part of the life cycle into chronic GVHD. The operational update, uh, we're very proud of the product's performance in the clinical trial and by reference, its uh, expanded access program gave us significant additional clinical data that will be supportive of our BLA application to the FDA later this year. I, I would say a key takeaway in the EAP program demonstrated the overall response of the product's performance dealing with a disease for which there is no treatment. And for all of us, this is an important moniker of what we all know and believe passionately, which is why we're all here, that cellular medicine is capable of addressing stand where standard of care completely fails, or there is no standard of care. And what I would just share with you on this program is we, we intend to submit a BLA application. We're, we're having a pre-BLA meeting later this year, and we're highly confident that this is a program that will uh, achieve our objective, which is to be made commercially available in the United States to treat children who otherwise would die. Uh, our regulatory and commercial pathway to market on this product, as I've said, we intend to have a pre-BLA later this year, and um, it's a fast-track designation. Of course, you all know what that means, priority review and rolling review, and we're working on it parallel path to uh, commercialization. This is a small market in the U.S., a controlled audience, and we know this stakeholder base as we've been working with them as our key clinical stakeholders to treat these patients in clinical trials. Um, I'm going to go into high-speed mode now to get through the rest of this in the next six minutes. Our significant program in cardiovascular care is looking at the end stage and advanced stages of the disease, very specifically in class three and class four patients. Our first program is a program funded by the National Institutes of Health and sponsored by NIH. We are just humbled that they picked our product. That program has completed a very important phase 2B, and in the last two weeks, we announced that that product will be um, announced as a late breaker session in, on November 11th at the American Heart Association. We all know what RMAT is about. We're fortunate that this product has received an RMAT designation and we're highly confident in its outcome with our partners at the NIH. I'm going to go straight to our second program that is the, probably the more significant. When we think about end-stage heart failure, it's a relatively small market in the United States, greater than $500 million, but it's an important market because it's, we're treating patients at the very end of the spectrum, whereas in class three patients, we all know a, a materially larger patient segment in cardiovascular care. Um, if we are successful in end stage, we're highly confident in the clinical outcomes for our class three patients. And that program is 85% enrolled, and we expect enrollment to be completed by the end of this year. I'm gonna have to skip over a fair bit of this and just summarize for you at the end. Um, I'll close on our chronic low back pain program Importantly, we've all in the United States heard about the opioid crisis, 50% of opioid prescriptions are for chronic low back pain, and we have a very significant disease-modifying therapy for durable improvement in pain and function that's needed in this market segment. 
And what we believe MPCO 6 ID will do is very squarely address those two fundamental challenges clinically. Our phase two clinical program was a forearm study which helped us identify the proper dosing and in addition identify the two key metrics by which the product would be evaluated. And apologies for skipping through so much of this, but I'll just summarize it to tell you that we're very excited about this program. The program has completed enrollment in earlier this year in March, a 400 patient uh, trial. And we believe very confidently that we'll have some exciting news to share with you on this program in the first part of 2019. Uh, quickly covering our financial strategy and our commercial strategy. First, it's about partnerships. Mesoblast is focused on developing these assets to critical stages of inflection point, validation to a commercial partner that what we represent to their commercial interest is significant. And an example of that today is a partnership we announced with Tasley Pharmaceutical Group of China, the largest cardiovascular company in China amongst its peers. They're a strategic investor in Mesoblast. They took an exclusive license to develop the products and uh, we are exceedingly um, pleased with their performance thus far in approaching that market. Earlier this year, we announced two non-dilutive financings to underpin the balance sheet to enable the company to get through major inflection points, one of those being commercialization of our GVHD program. And we are highly confident now we are poised to negotiate global and regional partnerships from a basis of strength uh, that we all appreciate in this room. Um, to just to close on our balance sheet, um, as you can see, the key takeaway here is a significant improvement in our cash position, which again underpins our strategy to deliver significant clinical inflection points for strategics who will value these assets commercially and will negotiate from a position of strength. Some key milestones that we would have you pay particular attention to through the balance of this year include the November 11th late breaker session, the American Heart Association in our cardiovascular program. We've already announced our 180 day secondary endpoint for GVHD. Uh, we'll be talking more about that program later this year. In addition, our chronic low back pain product, we will be uh, forthcoming with, we believe we'll be encouraging clinical data on that program and a regulatory strategy and We've touched on our financing and our regional partnerships, and we believe there'll be uh, more uh, exciting news to share with you on the commercial side of our business in the months and over the next 12 months. With uh, that, I've got 35 seconds for a question. <laughs> no questions? Thank you all for your patience.